JD the Media Jack and welcome to episode 11 of the Media Jack podcast and before we get into anything because I'm really excited about today's guest I just want to thank once again everyone who is involved with supporting me and everything I do all the work that I do and buying merch the shirt I love this shirt honestly it looks great the material is incredible it feels very comfortable and is more than just the media jack merchandise on my website the mediajack.ca there's also venting as normal the iron bikini and many different other things including mugs and water bottles and blankets and pillows again go to the mediajack.ca and while you're there you can sign up for patreon to support everything that i do it just costs at minimum a couple of dollars a month, but it goes a long way to help me out with everything here. Now, big thank you to the executive producer yet again, Red Wolf Don, for being a major contributor on Patreon. If you would like to get a shout out, all you have to do is again, go to Patreon. Today's guest is someone that I have been a fan of for years. I stumbled across her material and all of her work a couple of years ago, about five, six years ago when she was on Instagram and the growth that she has gone through over the past couple of years has been amazing. She is brilliant and funny, artistic, unique, utterly creative and hilarious and is diverse in many different forms of media. Her partner, is just as incredible as he is witty and quick and brilliant and I, I i just i'm blown away at the fact that i finally get an opportunity to talk to sylvia and andy right now the media jack podcast hi everyone my name is sylvia uh i am mostly known for my uh, TikTok page called Skull. And this is my boyfriend, Andy, and I feature him sometimes by tormenting him. And we just like to have a good time and live life and pull pranks and play video games. Yeah. Right? Right. And that's the first layer. That's the first layer. <laughs> and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty with some questions. Well, Sylvia, you've been a content creator, like an independent content creator for oh, sure. years now. Like, how did this yeah. start? I was a model uh, for a bit when I when I was when I turned eighteen. I started to do some alternate fashion modeling here uh, locally for some boutiques and lingerie shops. I did a little bit of hair modeling with colors and cuts. And then bikini modeling, and then I became a, uh, what's it called? Momo babe for local businesses through the radio show that I was doing promotions for. And I was like, man, this is really fun. It's really fun engaging with the crowd, engaging with people, being a personality. Let's continue this. So then I started to have an Instagram. From Instagram, I jumped into YouTube very briefly on my own. I think it was like 2013, 2014. And I did some Let's Plays on my own for a hot minute. And then I stopped doing that. I took a break from that to focus on being a freelance artist. And then through having Instagram still, I was selling my art. And then I was just like, why not try TikTok one day? And then that was wonderful. Yeah, it's been all over the place. I've always been kind of like uh, an artist and I always like performing. I like making people people feel good and happy and fun and safe. And so that's just always been something I've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very artistic, very original. Uh, yeah. Like you express yourself uh, with your personality as well as like the, the artwork on your body, the the yeah. incredible tattoos that that include like the one that you have on the side of your head, which is always stunning. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. And, and my second tattoo that I got, I went straight from I have a tiny one on my wrist right here mm. to head tattoo immediately. <laughs> big, big jump. I was like, hey, if I don't like it, I can always just grow my hair out, whatever. Right. And Andy, um, so what do you do? Because I have a feeling that this is uh, like talking to uh, Dr. Jekyll now to uh, <laughs> Ms. Hyde. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. It's uh, two sides of the same penny is a, Fair enough. a better analogy, I yeah. think. Um, 
I am a recently added favored guest star, I think. Um, Sylvia and I met four years ago. Yeah. A few days. Mm-hmm. We actually just celebrated an anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we both exited nasty relationships with each other's help and support and found each other and awakened in a very beautiful yeah. way. Yeah. And so I've always known Sylvia to be an incredible, prolific creator of art. She mm-hmm. and and so I've just sort of uh, been shoved into the limelight in that regard. Uh, I've always struggled with like stage fright and mm-hmm. uh, self awareness and a sense of like uh, I want everything to be perfect, and so I sit and stare at step one, never doing anything because it's not quite perfect. It's a common sort of like writer's block hurdle that. I've heard lots of good advice about how to get over, but meeting her was honestly the big uh, push down the hill. Uh, My profession is in tech. Uh, We both used to work in the video game industry. Uh, Sylvia still does. Uh, Sylvia was in customer support and knowledge base administration, and I was in hardware testing. Mm. And when we left the games industry, because our little uh, boutique gaming company suddenly did a big hiccup and laid off 60% of the staff, uh, I moved into the uh, consumer electronics sector. I did some stuff at Microsoft, testing yeah. server infrastructure stuff. And now I am uh, currently with SpaceX. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> Holy, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a dream opportunity oh, that came along. Too, like, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I am a hardware test specialist. So I, uh, it's like science fiction construction worker. I get to... Uh, use heavy machinery and drill holes in concrete and mm. work with pallet racks and forklifts and stuff. But the things that I'm doing and building are in service of testing the systems for the Starlink satellite program. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Uh, when the opportunity came along, I jumped like like right up out of my chair and I was like, oh, I'm smart. all of my coworkers at Microsoft, I'm so happy to have spent this time with you, but bye. <laughs> <laughs> And, and yeah, it's been I'm out. <laughs> I work with a very cool team. Hardware hardware testing is a very interesting area. Mm. You got to work with your hands. You got to do a lot of problem solving. It's a mixture of technical awareness, computer knowledge, and like just general know how and building. And I, it's it's square inside the bullseye for my personal interests and capabilities. So it's been it's been fantastic. That's amazing. But yeah. Since you gave such a long-winded answer, if we want to talk about like jobs and like where we, what we actually do do, sure. um, <laughs> gosh, I I went to school for art. Um, I am a double major with uh, my focus on uh, photography and uh, design, and a minor in religious studies. Um, and then after college, I kind of had odds and ends jobs here and there. I did freelance art for quite a, some time, and I landed a job as a receptionist um, at Slave to the Needle in Seattle. Mm-hmm. I was I worked there for a bit at the tattoo shop, and then I did a bunch of escorting on the side mm-hmm. as well. That was fun. I got into sex work on my own and had a blast. That's continued. Uh, something that I do today. And then after I worked as a receptionist, I uh, got a job at the company that we met at, yeah, as customer service. And then I worked my way up into knowledge base administrating. And then through there, after we got laid off, I landed a job at Wizards of the Coast, if anybody is a magic of magic the gathering fan and a dnd fan yeah um we we make those games and i am a knowledge base administrator there that is my full-time career wow as well as content creator and i have my own business as an adult um content creator as well that's amazing yeah and i still do art yeah very busy active household (laughs) with all kinds of interesting hobbies Well, there there is a third uh, third character in your uh, wacky cast, and that is Chumba. Chumba, who... who's taking a nap right now. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of the three of you, like you guys, just burst with personality. Like we don't, of course, like the general public doesn't get to see uh, your day to day. You only, yeah. you only, we only get to see what you guys share. And a lot of the times um, on TikTok, where you have really started to really blow up, in my opinion. Um, Sylvia, your your clapbacks in the creative way you go about cool. these 
these uh, trolls and these yeah. rude comments and the comments that are supposed to be nice but aren't and whatnot are is brilliant. But Andy, like when you jump in and with the two of you working together, it is like I I dare I say like you can't script how brilliant you guys are. Thank you. That's a, that's huge compliment. Yeah, Thank you. we we banter a lot. Like that's. When when we first started to get to know each other, like one of the first things that really stuck out to me with meeting him and talking to Andy was like, wow, this guy, he's so fun to just interact with. And yeah. ever since us meeting and like his friends getting to know me and vice versa, everybody is always like, oh, man, you guys are so much fun at like parties and just to have around. And so, yeah, why not share that with the world? Right. It's mm. it's been a lot of fun because if other people if other people enjoy what we do around us. And why not why not give that out to the universe to enjoy as well yeah i think i think content creation is always uh an act of work and an act of oh, art sure. and creation but a lot of where sylvia's success comes from on the platform is the amount of it that's woven in that's just really organic natural <laughs> stuff like uh, yeah. she does set up a ring light and sure. pose a camera yeah. before she jumps out in a luigi costume and answer asks trivia questions but honestly the being jumped out at in a costume and asked trivia questions part was not a huge deviation from our normal life. Right. So, yeah. The reactions and the interactions and the general sort of like vibe, I think, I, and our, our, our therapist shares this opinion. I, yes. think, I think that people find that accessible because everyone yeah. has a sort of inherent sense of when something is genuine and yeah. when something is forced and artificial. And right. that's, that's really what people move toward is, is just that, that realness yeah that's it's very complimentary to have you say yeah such hell yeah high praise Thank of it you. because you know the embarrassing truth behind the wizard of oz curtain is that I mean, we're not trying very hard just, we're yeah just, we're just being idiots together <laughs> yeah exactly laugh. and just recording it <laughs> and i'll put some funny text animations yeah. on it subtitles do a world of difference oh, yeah. <laughs> and sound effects and zoom ins yep. yes. like everyone loves those yes <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> just, just springing to mind the one time yeah. I think Sylvia, you legitimately scared the crap out of Andy. You, uh, he yeah. was coming in to, through the garage or something like yeah. that, and like that, like monster scream. Yeah. Off <laughs> you quickly mentioned there that uh, therapists, you guys are avid um, supporters of seeking therapy, as and like, myself. Um, you know, it, I, I too, like I, I seek a therapist on a moderately regular basis, not because something's wrong, but just as like a, a form of, of check-in type thing. Well, yeah, no therapy, self-help, mental health. Oh my gosh. That is so important. Cause like, it's big for us. We, yeah. we have been in therapy together almost as long as we've known each other. Mm. And, oh yeah. You brought me to your therapist who is now my therapist, like within months, yep. you hound, yeah, he's, he's amazing. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. his his approach is uh, uh very centered around healthy communication. Mm. And yes. uh, there's a book that he references often by Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. 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 Yeah, it's a nonviolent communication. It is our Bible. I yeah. love that. It's book. literally a step by step instruction manual for slowing down communication. Yep. And it's if done correctly, it short circuits every hostile yeah. emotion that's possible. It's really amazing. It's changed both of our lives for the better. And it, it really focuses on language that is extremely inclusive and undeniably like genuine, right? So if I were to be like, Andy, I feel ignored. No, that's not true. Ignored isn't a feeling. Ignored is what you are interpreting mm. his, his action, the other person's action as. Right. That's, really hard That's a me. judgment. So when I say, if I were to say, I feel ignored, it's very easy for you to get defensive and say, no, 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 I'm not ignoring you. And then I get like offended because I'm not being listened to. What I need to do in a situation like that is slow down and pick the words that don't come out as judgmental or hot and speak about my experience and not an interpretation of your action. So something more like, I am scared that you're not listening to me. 
I feel sad when you don't respond to me when I say blank. Because you can't be like, you don't feel sad, but you can say, I'm not ignoring you. And that's where that hostility and like don't, tension. No, no. Don't not do the me voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I don't mean to. Oh, gosh. No, that's not what I meant. No one's bad. I'm just trying to give yeah, an yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. No. We don't fall. No, we're fine. This is yes. a hypothetical we're going through. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so like, just simple things, which, which come off as simple, right? But you have to reteach your brain how to format those phrases and questions and, and, and answers because ugh, it's a shame like how parenting is nowadays. People aren't taught to actually talk about their feelings in a genuine, raw, vulnerable way. Mm. It's so shunned and like that well, falls into obviously traps. We, yeah. we proselytize about it a lot. It's yeah. It's been so impactful for us. That yes. We step sort of just jabber John. Oh. Yeah, in I social circles we have deep really meaningful conversations with all of our friends about therapy and communication it's, yeah so it's, it's way into the social media stuff as well yeah. and i think that's a really warm yeah connected center that's part of why i think the the community around sylvia's tiktok has been such a wholesome group mm -hmm. for the most part mm -hmm. because, because it's yeah it's that that stuff comes right through yeah i think very yeah good. No, absolutely. Communication, yeah, like one hundred percent. Like I work in communication yeah. on, on multiple platforms. Communication is key. Honesty is key, and being able to uh, being able to translate that to to a listening audience or just a partner or, or someone you're working with or someone you're just having a casual conversation with is important. And a lot of people get lost in in themselves in the nuances they they seem to stutter step or back off when they feel as though oh if i say this will this actually come back and hurt me when generally right. it's it's not a, it's it, no one's stopping anyone from saying what you're thinking right yeah right. no absolutely like i don't want to be a person to uh try to assume anything but sure i do I do think that there is a, a, a definite understanding of someone who creates content on an adult level and has a very successful relationship. One, communication is absolutely key. Two, understanding and trust follow second and third. Yes. How does this work in your guys' relationship? Hmm. Um, yeah, you want to take can, that one? Yeah, I can do okay. that. Uh, we have a secret side road superpower born of past trauma and the healing around it mm -hmm. is the simplest answer uh sylvia and i i briefly mentioned we both came from bad relationships we met each other in those bad unhealthy relationships and we recognized each other's need for support and really central to both of our past traumas around interpersonal relationships has been the idea of trust and truth. Yep. Uh, both of us have been lied to extensively in different kaleidoscopic, unique, horrible ways, as you can probably imagine. Everyone has these experiences. Sylvia has an obsessive mind. And I, I legitimately, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. And a lot of it falls into the rituals that I need to do, that I feel a need to do every day in order to be healthy, successful, and happy. Hmm. And yes, so a lot of it is also thought oriented. Yeah. I will I will get stuck on a thought loop and investigate every nook and cranny of this idea. Hmm. And that that power or that ability is great, but when you apply that to also having anxiety and fear and trust issues, ooh, boy, yeah. it can get into a nightmare. Because <laughs> like the, the commonly understood interpretation of obsessive compulsive disorder is like monk. It's, it's just like organizing physical, and like touching. Physical rituals, yeah. manifestations yeah. of the obsessiveness that externalize themselves, but there's a whole range of those kinds of obsessive behaviors that happen inside the yeah. mind silently. Right. Yep. So she looks like she's just sitting there, but she's reciting the same awful prediction 10,000 times yep. in real time in her voice in her own mind yep. making it try to sound right it's a really specifically intense experience of being harmed by dishonesty so yes. when i met her 
and we fell in love and decided to move forward in our romance telling her the truth was essential mm. to a degree that i cannot overstate or exaggerate it's i have had to learn to be obsessive in order to healthily mm. cater to her but like biological needs basically because it's this stuff is brain chemistry derived you can't ever logic it out you can't ever convince it to go away so right and and my therapist at the time was like you know there's you have one chance at this you tell her the the truth all the time and if you ever fuck that up then it's over instantly yeah. and that's that's the only rule and so i had a good coach i had a good goal i had a good motivation and the result of this policy, which you know a lot of people talk about, is a radical honesty policy, and it's difficult in practice. And for us, like it for anyone, there's things that I have been completely honest about mm. that have started really difficult conversations that have lasted hours and left us both feeling drained and had a bad day. But anytime she feels any fear, gets caught in a loop, sees something that makes her feel strange like like she can read my phone she knows my passwords yeah. there is nothing to hide and that's literal and figurative because yeah. there's there's no lights in the room in which to cast shadows with it's it's like so that that stuff was front loaded and rehearsed right. oh, yeah. and imbued with a loving caring motivation as the, the the foundation stone of our relationship yeah. and so then that was an incredible undertaking but the, the the cool downhill side of that is that things like feeling secure with my partner who's my monogamous partner making spicy content to be enjoyed by the viewing public mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know it's not that huge a deal on yeah. i like i know what's going on because i'm i'm doing it i'm shooting it i'm yeah. producing it i'm um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I'm glad you like it. Thumbs up. And for the most yeah. part, we get some wholesome ass feedback oh to God. that effect. Um, it's I, wonderful. I, I don't want to blow them up too hard, but we had it. So there was an individual who reached out and had lost someone they loved and requested a custom video that was a sweet reminder of the feelings they used to share with their partner. And yeah, the man. entire interaction, front to back was this like really warm, fuzzy, like emotional connection experience. <laughs> it, it happened to be a, a pornographic video transaction in, in specific yeah. nature. So it's, it's been a really interesting exploration, but the one thing that it hasn't ever been is a stumbling block yeah. for like my security or our monogamy. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, we also exist in a, in a pretty insane version of monogamy. Um, Again, partially. Insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't Pe think it's people do think that it is strange. Yeah. We don't watch porn. Right. Yeah, we don't consume. We yeah. we we make we watch our own. Right. But like, I don't view any other. And I don't either at all. I haven't since I met her. I uh, wanted that, and again, it's this sort of like, I like to brag about this wonderful. Because I, I give her this amazing sense of security and priority mm -hmm. with this behavior, and it's you know it's it's a pious sort of like noble thing that I want to be trying to do, but it's not something that I did casually or without difficulty originally because I grew up right. in a very sex positive sort of environment, and and the idea that pornography could be comfortably consumed mm -hmm. while in a relationship to me felt normal when I met Sylvia. Yeah. Sylvia's previous partner used to explicitly abuse her by watching through watching porn. porn. Like my my ex would oftentimes compare me to other porn stars. Oh. He would constantly he would constantly have yeah, it dude. up and on yeah, like, and peruse it with me around. Ghost and story shit. I would I would like look over and see that he's just going through subreddits with porn while I'm making us dinner. And I'm like, um, excuse me. And he goes, What? I'm saving stuff for later for when you go to bed. Yeah. And I'm dude, like, oh, yeah, no, super what twisted. Super wow. Twisted. So, so that made me feel really bad yeah. and sad. That was one of the first conversations we had as we were getting to know each other because we trauma bonded. We we met and we oh, were yeah. like, oh, you're fucked up. So am I. <laughs> yeah. about the most fucked up thing that's ever happened to us. And like it was a race. It was great. Yeah. So very early on, she described this and that 
I wanted so badly to do something that was like the antithesis of that for yeah. her that I was like, well, yeah, shoot, man, I'll quit. I don't give it. I don't, whatever. You'll make me more, right? You'll whatever. I, yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, look at me. I got flex on you, girl. And it was very fun. And it was sort of like a New Year's resolution style personal challenge thing. And and it never got more difficult. Hmm. And the reward of how much it means to her has made it a really simple self-sustaining decision. And it's been so long now that honestly, when there is like what other people consider normal amounts of like titillating content in a television show, even it like, it like really blows me back. I'd like, like, we're like, Oh, ick. oh okay. All right. What, all right. What do I do? Where do I look? I, don't know. <laughs> I turned into this like, like choir boy sort of, yeah. but it's, I'm horny as hell. I'm a oh, boy, but, but it's just every day. The fence, you know? it's, all, and it's, it's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, but it's something that I've found great personal reward in maintaining because it's such a, a, a healing salve for her unique needs and, and, and previous wounds. Yeah, and again, That's it comes from like great, open, honest communication. Because mm -hmm. if you're in a relationship where you're comfortable with your partner viewing porn and you guys talk about it openly, that's great. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not, it's a whatever works for you yeah, and not, makes it's you not, happy. This is the right answer. The but, right answer is just giving your partner what they need to feel safe the right answer is being honest about what you need to because so many people go into relationships wanting to be like the cool boyfriend or the cool girlfriend who are like oh i'm okay with polyamory yeah. i'm okay with porn and really deep down you're not yeah. and then years later it comes up and boils up because you've never been okay with it yeah. just be honest about your needs so the easy thing yeah. was just sylvia being brave enough to say yeah it would make me feel good and safe if you never watched any Porn at all yeah and i said that and he's like okay yeah. and that's it <laughs> cool I'll give it a shot thank you <laughs> cool yeah. yeah no i've dude and the yeah the the bond that results the trust that, yeah. that you can harvest from that kind of input it doesn't have to be abstaining from pornography that's not the answer right, right. but a total dedication to the needs of your partner yeah i think is and so that's that's where that comes from for us and so yeah. that again folds right into the whole making spicy content and yet feeling totally secure because yep. again we we live in our own constant super codependent infinite romance we don't really yeah. ever come up for air yeah <laughs> well, it's fine down here yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a lot to unpack there and i really do appreciate sure. you sharing so much first of all yeah um the um i i i refer to it as a negative spiral of of getting locked mm. in your own head and having like the worst case scenario or an argument that is just of other people's voices, but it's in your own head and it just continues to just spiral out of control and get darker and worse. And then it just ruins your mood. And then you get locked into this because you feel as though this is the result. This is what's going to happen. If I bring this up, yeah. this is exactly how it's going to be. It's just going to ruin my day and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It, it, it's that is a difficult and dangerous place to be when you're on your own but when you finally have an opportunity to maybe vocalize that you realize that the person that you were having in your head with all this negative dark and damaging um, reaction or response or anything like that actually flips it on you and says like no no everything's fine I everything's okay that light and that's a scary leap to take too like that's the other thing right is like with ocd and anxiety for me how it manifests sometimes is i'll be stuck in there and i'll know that i just have to reach out to him mm -hmm. and be like hey can you help me with this and i know it'll be fine but my fear is like don't do it you're gonna fuck shit up <laughs> don't just don't which is the oh. worst because it, you you stop yourself from moving yeah. forward you stop yourself from, from getting the help that you need exactly. and you know is going to work yep. it's so aggravating yep. and then you just get mad and then he's like honey are you okay and then i'm just steaming because i'm just on fire inside oh. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are adorable. Uh, move, move, moving uh, forward to an, another thing yeah. that you uh, quickly touched on here when it comes to um, intimate moments and intimacy yeah. in general, it has been proven to be actually very therapeutic. Uh, Sylvia, you've uh, you've yeah. gone into being an escort and then translated yeah. that to uh, adult content and then a very touching and like intimate beyond physicality request from someone 
it's yeah. been proven uh, not all the time, but most of the time that what people view as an escort service, what people view as pornography and what it actually is for a lot of people are two drastically different things. People, yeah, people imagine like the, the cheap motel and the cocaine on the table and blah, 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 blah. When in yeah. honesty, you're helping someone get through a tough time. My gosh, let me like there when I was escorting. Well, yeah, the majority of my clients, it was more like sometimes a date and then we would wind up having sex or it's some kind of fetish. Oh, sometimes it was just to hang out with a guy yeah. because they were sad and they were lonely or they lost their wife. They they just broke up and they just want the company of a attractive person to laugh with, to talk to. And that's it. And that's like, oh, people just, people are just sad and lonely. It's so, oh my God, <laughs> stop. Everybody be nicer. <laughs> it makes me so sad. <laughs> no, and, and, that, and that a lot of the times is the case because for yeah. some people out there, and I'm not generalizing men, for some people oh, out no, there. anyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Some people out there, like it's, it is sometimes just easier, simpler, and a lot more satisfying to say, Please just help me feel this for this period of time, as opposed to meeting someone new, trying to get to that point in their relationship. And you know, so sometimes it is therapeutic beyond any sort of help. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, sex therapy is a thing for a reason. I almost went down that path, sex therapy. It's actually something I wanted to talk to you about. It'd be cool if we well, become sex therapists. I so I think, fun. I, you know, I think it's. The problem's upstream a little bit from mm, there. I know sure. I, I the, the idea that that can provide therapeutic release is totally valid. Absolutely. But I, the idea that that's where those people have to end up, I think, is is the symptom of a, a lack of yeah support and education around it. There's the stigma against therapy and mental health services is so strong both you know in in the public light and in some private family cultures. Like that's what ends up making it a lower bar for entry mm, to yeah. go somewhere like to an escort just to seek simple human validation. Yeah. Like that my heart goes out to anyone who's who's stuck on that island because there should be easier, more comfortable access yeah. to that same feeling of human validation and and, yeah. and, and value. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's a giant kaleidoscopic mess and, and it's I'm in my late late 30s now, and so I'm starting to really get comfortable with the idea that everything that I like and do and enjoy is born of or influenced by the most fucked up things that have happened to me in my past. And so that's just, that's just a real part of the working mechanics of a human being. So it's this the Sylvia has done a lot to take awful origins and work them into successes and <laughs> learning moments and skill sets that have borne fruit trauma the same, <laughs> yeah the, sa the same input in a different context generates very different outputs oh, sure. so it's it's a testament to her strength that she's hey. come out forged sharper and not destroyed no. Absolutely. If I was a villain, the world would be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a bad guy. I laugh, but I'm horrified. Thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that experience is all that unique either. That's, that's, that's kind of how it works. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Some of the most brilliant comedians will tell you some of the horrific stories of their lives. So, no, I, I get it. And we've all been through it. I Hell, I've shared, like, a lot of my trauma and 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 everything on my own show here. So, like, yeah. and, and kudos to you, Andy. Like, I'm in my mid-40s. I'm still trying to sort this shit out, so. <laughs> hey, man, you're already cool with therapy, so you're on the right road. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> Thanks doing for that. it right. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and, and finally, the last thing I wanted to touch on with the uh, yeah. everything that you, you shared so far is um, just just the just the compliment and the fact that you know there's I I've, like I've been dating this incredible woman for going on five years, and yeah. um, I I I too like un with without even thinking about it suddenly like my 
interest in consuming pornography just dropped off. And yeah. it, it, it was part and parcel of, I didn't want to instill that insecurity in her. I, yeah. I didn't want to make her question uh, things that were like present in her head before she even met me. But right. at the same time, like I am, <laughs> I look at her every day and I go, how, <laughs> how, right. how are yeah. you? into this <laughs> yeah, he's the same way yeah it cranks up the intensity of what you already have right in front of you to enjoy it's wonderful it's mm -hmm. a it's a really cool side benefit and again it's not like the only route to that end goal but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm so glad that you enjoy that i'm very familiar with what you're describing mm -hmm. she, every day she likes to shower in the afternoons after i get home from work and so there's this little ritual she steps out of the bathroom before going into the bedroom and just stop and do a little pose and, and it, we're going like what twelve hundred days? Yeah, Russia, it's not. And it's cease to leave me speechless. <laughs> making cartoon fox face. Yeah, so it's good. It's good, good, good. Good. Is that is that is that is that part part of like the bodybuilding routine that you started a little while ago? That you being able to stop, pose, flex, move. Being able to pose. Exactly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I was. I'm always ready. I'm always prepared. <laughs> With uh, with TikTok, let, let's let's move into something yeah. a little lighter here because I appreciate. Sure. I don't want to stop, but at the same time, there's a lot I want to cover. Yeah, please. You're driving, <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> what about him? Some of the most <laughs> brilliant stuff on TikTok anyone has ever seen oh, is just God. utterly stunning. How did this come to be? Lu like why like why luigi why luigi why the question box and why ambushing andy okay so ambushing andy because scaring him is fun right. yeah, that was and i cool. that's always i've always loved doing that um the trivia box uh i have a cool light i thought that was a fun prop and mm. i wanted to include it and i wanted to do something trivia based i wanted to do a series that was trivia based and Luigi and like pun based, right? Because I like punny jokes. And I was gonna say last, uh, Luigi, because for me, uh, growing up, my parents loved video games. Oh, loved video games. I was blessed to have amazing parents who made a very loving home and were always down to have fun. And my mom's favorite Mario character is Luigi. Uh -huh. So Luigi has always had a soft spot in my heart. And uh, just between like Andy and I too, Luigi is just a funny meme. He's just like the other weird brother. And just one day to the next, I was like, what if I get a Luigi costume and just like show that to Andy? What's he going to think? And I did. And then that was funny. And I was like, I'm going to include this in TikTok. Why not? <laughs> but like the loving answer, yes. my mom loved Luigi, so I love Luigi. <laughs> That's awesome, that, right? Couldn't have come a from a better place, bit. honestly. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> uh, you guys have recently uh, fired up, and like, I, I mean, recently is in with within the past calendar year, uh, the Power Up yeah. Couple on YouTube. Yeah. And um, yeah. And so, like, explain explain how this came to be because clearly you guys love you you have an incredible chemistry between the two of you and your love for video games but again like jumping to a yet again another platform here how did this come to be i have always played a lot of video games right. and i worked in the video game industry right. and 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 always loved the idea of crafting that interest and that hobby into my profession and I met Sylvia and she had already successfully done this a little bit mm -hmm. and only stopped because of the previous shitty relationship influences. Mm. Yeah. I uh, I dabbled in the most shy way. I have I have a YouTube channel that's buried somewhere out there that I won't disclose the name of and it's just <laughs> it's just raw gameplay footage with no voice or face and it's Fallout 4 and it was when I got my first NVIDIA video card and I could do game stream without running any other software. So it's, I had wanted to dip my toe and may, mo mostly just been staring at my own stage fright for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And 
Meeting Sylvia, one of the primary mechanisms of uh, spending leisure time together was to watch YouTube and, and share it with each other. Have you seen this? Oh, well, have you seen this? Oh, well, let me show you this. Oh. And she introduced me to the Game Grumps, and we absolutely fell in love, constantly devouring their content. We are massive fans. We go to see them live. We follow Dan Avedan's side music projects. Ninja have- Sex Party. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the Ninja Sex Party and the the most recent one that he just came out with also Sylvia was just listening to uh his old stuff? No, his new the side project that was all his yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, all, why am all. I blanking on a name Whatever. right now? This is embarrassing. But yeah, he just started a new band. Yes. yes so yes. yeah, game streaming's been a big thing, been a big thing and uh Sylvia said at one point you know, I, I'd like to get back into it. What do you think about that? And I immediately, like, felt this huge bloom of, like, FOMO. Like, please don't leave me behind. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be left out. Oh, my goodness. And, again, with the therapist thing, I've talked to him a lot about why I want to do so many things and why I just sit and don't do them yet. And <laughs> as soon as she hit the scene, his advice was just, like, stay in her blast radius and watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sure enough, Shadow Academy is the name of the band. Sorry. So yeah, um, she said, "You know what? I'm tired of uh, you know just waiting. I think it's a good idea. We have fun when we game. We have good banter. Let's start recording it." I so then I made was... a little animated intro because I was like, "I'm going to challenge myself and try animation," and I made the little song. She taught herself how to do that in an afternoon of maniacal staring, and yes. then. Mm-hmm. She tasked me uh, uh, with just setting up the hardware. So yep. I'm I'm parts. Uh, no, she's parts. I'm labor. Yeah. Uh, and so we got two uh, adorable little boom mics. We got a streaming box. We got the, the ring lights and set up already. The gaming rigs are already there. So there were no more excuses. And now when we were already going to be sitting on the couch playing video games, mm. we just have the footage recording and she edits it. And the result is... So much more polished and entertaining than even I would have imagined. I feel so stupid for the years of just sitting there not generating content because my beautiful, talented artist <laughs> girlfriend has just faced me with this. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's very, very fun and and yeah. satisfying because in part we don't have like a hard goal around it. Again, we have we have day jobs. Right. Yep. And right now that's paying our bills. Right. Yep. And so all this is is really engaging hobbies, and yeah. so uh, popularity rising, monetization, <laughs> sponsorships. Anytime anything like that happens, it's like, oh wow, what a wonderful surprise that this yeah. thing happened in the middle of this hobby time. <laughs> at no point, like a, a water line I'm trying to stay at, right. or a yeah. goal that I'm worried about missing. And I think that's a lot. Oh hello, Hi, guest Katie. star. And I think uh, I was just gonna say, I think that that's a lot of the reason why it is successful slowly because we're not i mean we grind a bit and like we make time we carve out time to do stuff but yeah at the end of the day i just i just want to have fun i want to share it and if something takes off great yeah and eventually it will and it does that's just how stuff works so i know that it's gonna get to a greater audience over time. It's just a matter of when yeah. and being patient. And that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. Like, the, I, you know, I've been asked many times, like, you know, how do you become successful? How do you become popular? Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, yeah, yeah. And the first two keys are always, you know, make sure you enjoy what you're doing. And yep. secondly, be genuine. Yeah. Like, don't, yep. don't fake anything because people will yeah. suss out whether or not you're being genuine or not. And it's tiring, like having to constantly have a persona or have a character that you're playing or remember all the other stories and like white lies you told. It's just too much work. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you're honest and genuine, you have nothing to be scared of coming back and biting you in the ass. (laughs) Way easier, way less stressful way to live. Absolutely. Who's the guest star here? This is Link. Link. This is my cute cat. Yeah, she's 16 years old. 16? Absolutely <laughs> yeah. beautiful. Right? Thank you. We think she's a horcrux. <laughs> I don't think she's actually a cat. <laughs> well, if very expensive and powerful things start disappearing, then you know. 
<laughs> but yeah, she's also here in the house with Truba. Yeah. She runs the show. Awesome. I have some questions for you from people that follow me on Patreon. I asked them a little while ago if they wanted to field some questions to no shit. to the incredible Sylvia and Andy. So if do, you do some of your Patreon folks actually like follow me on TikTok? I think so. I, I believe no. so because uh there there are some very question like there's some deep cut questions in here. So bring it. All right. Dude, hell yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's so That's cute. Awesome. Thanks for asking them. Cool. That's awesome. All right. Just as an aside, this awesome. is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, the first question actually is for the both of you. And uh, Daryl says, uh, huge fan of your tattoos, Sylvia. I was wondering if you guys have any matching tattoos, and if not, when? Oh. No. Not yet. Soon. No. Yeah. No. And soon. Um, he's actually just about to get some work done uh, for his birthday coming up. I'm going to be uh, paying for a chunk of a tattoo, mm. but he's probably going to get a cover up. Right. You're probably going to start that. I'm on the fence. I have choice paralysis. Yeah. Who knows? We've but discussed a few different options. Regardless, eventually we will absolutely get matching tattoos and what's it's going to be of... something super dumb. You know, what's the name of that adorable <laughs> dinosaur comic? That's front runner right There's now. There's a TikTok hmm. page. Maybe you know of it. Uh, it's an animator who does these really cute. There's a pink dinosaur and a blue dinosaur. And it's always about being really happy and inclusive. And sometimes they talk about like mental health stuff. It's like a comic. It's really There's sweet and two wholesome. Two dinosaurs who are always impossibly nice and in love with each other. Hmm. And so it resonates with our yeah. time a lot. So, yeah. But yeah, soon. 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 Don't worry. Way ahead, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I wear a lot of long sleeve shirts and stuff, but I love I love body art as well. I'm yeah, just, I'm just a little behind in the race. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. I I I get it. I absolutely understand. Uh, my tattoo is uh, under my shirt because I'm in the public eye and I have to be professional. But uh, sure. it took me a while. Whatever to get that means. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's like the question of what the fuck is normal anyway. So <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about backs of my hands a lot more since I discovered that the tech industry has a blue collar sector. Ah, uh, yeah. Imagine. There you go. Uh, this question is for Jen or from Jen. It's actually not so much of a question. Um, it says, Sylvia, you have no idea how much I appreciate you sharing your battle and how you live with your Tourette's uh, being someone who ha comes from a family of Tourette's it is very difficult to it's very difficult to share that with some people within my workplace or even some of the people in my personal life thank you so yeah. much for doing what you do yeah oh, I'm so sorry that you have to keep that hidden Gosh, yeah, my absolute pleasure. More, more advocacy and more like exposure about all health and health issues should be popularized. That's such a shame that you have to keep that a secret. That's so, ugh, my heart goes out to you. Um, man, for me, I know it's easier said than done. Mm but taking the time to slow down and like weigh is it worth keeping it secret is it worth keeping it suppressed because at the end of the day i know how you're feeling if you're trying to to keep that down it is so draining and tiring and you get so sore and aggravated that is not worth it just to make other people feel more comfortable because you're not expressing your tourettes forget that you have every right to just exist comfortably and Tourette's never hurts anyone else. It can hurt you if you keep it suppressed or if you're trying to like conceal it. So fucking fuck those people. Ew. <laughs> what is Link doing there? <laughs> yeah, she, she, she wants to cuddle. She rules the lap, but she actually doesn't like these pants. They have too many straps and pockets. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. I'm wearing my tech wear sweats. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. She's okay. a very unsure cat. Like, I, I want to sit here. Where the, yeah. where the fuck is yeah. the soft spot? Be just right. Can't make up her mind. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Another question. This one is from Steve, and it's for Sylvia. <laughs> He asks, Hi. would you ever dip back into bodybuilding? Back? 
Yeah, I still do. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shit. Um, I'm just I know, reading I the questions here. <laughs> no, you're good. I went at it hard. Yeah. I think I understand what the difference is between now and then. Um, and the answer is to that extent, no. Because to that extent, it is long-term unhealthy. Um, what I did uh, years and years and years ago was I was staying cut and staying very cut mm. for an extended amount of time where usually folks who do bodybuilding um, only maintain that level of leanness for a day or two. Um, doing it for months straight is very detrimental to your health. Mm. And I learned that the hard way by doing it and then getting really sick, feeling really weak. I lost my period for two and a half years. So no, I will not going be going back into that. I don't think that is worth it. Mm. Um, for me, what I do now is I train to be strong daily. Because back then, the way that I looked, while it looked shredded, I couldn't, I couldn't run for more than like five minutes. I couldn't lift anything heavy and feel good it was, it wasn't healthy. It was show muscles. It was show muscles. It wasn't right now, it though, wasn't I can like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and like I said, I like to train now uh, and maintain my physique in a way where I feel and am powerful. Like, like uh, that TikTok I made, I can carry up all the groceries in one run, all bags. I don't need anybody's help. I can lift up furniture all by myself. I can, I can, you know, function in the real world. And then some, like I can run up a flight of stairs and feel great. You could throw a punch. Creator Clash 3. I can throw a fucking punch. Yeah, come on, Creator Clash. I want to go boxing. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Seeing you. Dude, I'm so down. <laughs> well, we've, been, we've been adding them since we watched the first one live. I... We're very interested in hooking up with that. Eventually, practice. one day, I'm saying it, I'm going to be on the Creator Clash. If that's still a thing that continues for years, I that is a goal I have. I want to fucking box someone on TV. Hell yeah. Well, Creator Clash is uh, unlike the uh, the other uh, other thing, which has to do with the Pauls, whereas Creator Clash yep. is, is charity-based. Yeah, which yeah. is awesome, too. I love that. And so again, I, yeah. I, I, would, I would also say that it's... It is also centered around that same thing we've been mentioning that that genuine vibe yeah. that we we watched the entire live stream of the first one yeah. and at no point did it feel like anyone was forcing any of their characterization that seemed like a bunch of people who came together because it would be fun to do what yeah. they were doing and then enjoyed the doing thereof yep. and that made it so entertaining I, I yeah. absent that I think you're left with the Pauls and yeah that's that's why that other content is. So cringy and gross. <laughs> and well, I'm, I don't. I don't care. They're yeah. garbage. They're bad. I'm sorry. They're bad. They're not using their platform in a way that is good and productive and healthy. They're just feeding into the shit side of uh, social media. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame. You don't have to apologize to me. I'm on the same boat. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Jaws on the floor. Maybe half of our regular YouTube roster showed up on the fight card for the first one. So that was a really cool special event for yeah. us. We love all those creators. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one is from Rachel and she asks, what type of video games can we look forward to on your YouTube channel? Well, we now, um, we, we just finished a long playthrough of Donkey Kong Country and we're going to play through the entirety of Donkey Kong Country. Um, we are hoping to also do Super Mario RPG. Yeah. Uh, Lots of stuff. Yoshi's the game, World. The Game Grumps are someone that we love to emulate the Island. general style of. So things like Super Mario RPG we have planned because then we can do all the voices and read all the dialogue and have a fun yeah. time doing that. And uh, we also have the Xbox Game Pass. So we spend yeah. a lot of time just like playing whatever's hot for the month. Uh, uh, the new Hades, Hades for Hades. sure. Oh, Hades. The new Hades. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the, the sweet spot for us right now, especially for the YouTube channel, is couch gaming. Because yeah. we have all of our setup mounted here. You can see one of the boom yeah. arms. I've got one matching over here yeah. that doesn't hook up for Discord. But eventually, I also want to show off our Minecraft we play uh, realm. Entirely too much Minecraft. Way too much. We have big plans to do that on YouTube. And um, 
the the only difficulty with that right now is setting it up in a way where it captures my screen and your screen and flipping back and forth but i think we have a we have a good thing figured uh, out but yeah minecraft is definitely going to go up there too play some need for speed need for speed which hell one? yeah unbound the new one okay well yeah. Yeah. which yeah. i my i loved heat need for speed heat was the shit and they took out so many of the features from that game yeah. specifically the heat feature from the online nighttime racing where the cops can get you i don't know why unbound if you're listening put that fucking back please <laughs> would be way better but yeah lots of games yeah and, lots uh, all kinds um, Shout out requests in the comments on the channel. Oh yeah, for sure. Because we love to please the masses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We'll play, we'll play anything. We've been told we have to play through, uh, the the divorce game. Uh, oh, it takes two. It takes two. Uh, oh, geez. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. A, um, so that's on the couch co-op, couch co-op, and more. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, the new Breath of the Wild, the oh, new God, Zelda yeah, game. I have to finish mine. That's, Obviously. That's part of my still playing that it's when the new zelda comes out i'm taking a week off of work <laughs> just so i can binge it and record it there's going to be high skull playing it i'm just gonna get stoned and get lost in it hell yeah i mean it sounds like a solid plan to me <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> no notes no yeah. uh there's there's one more question and it's yeah. it's uh bullet points and so i think this yeah, this person is definitely uh, wanting to make sure that they not give away too much in case it is a sensitive topic. But it's okay. all it says is it's it's from it's from Chris and it says fundraiser dot update question mark fuck that bitch. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. You sound like a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Um, the previous relationship that I've mentioned that okay. when Sylvia and I met mm. was a marriage and it was an unhealthy marriage and divorce proceedings have been active for the entire four years that I've been with Sylvia mm. and it's a nightmare like I'm sure many of your listeners know already things escalated past the point of an attempt at mediation and so the fundraiser was a last ditch effort to yeah. come up with a retainer for legal representation to proceed to the next step of this entirely onerous and arguably unnecessary thing. That's so gross how long divorce yep. takes. Yep. Like, and so yeah. as mad as I want to be, as mad as I am at any individual, it's also just been a grueling experience to interface with this legal policy nightmare maze yeah. and the the complexity of each individual state's individual policies and the origins of it and the arguments that come out so the fundraiser was to put it simply wind in my sails i was at a very low point and the the biggest power play that my ex could attempt to level at me was to drain my finances because she's in a more financially secure position or felt like she was mm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> having the support mm. of so many incredible generous strangers who yeah. laugh at my girlfriend's funny videos on the internet was with no exaggeration absolutely life-changing mm. wow um, yeah and i am happy to report that the proceedings will very shortly be fully resolved Yay. and that the outcome is as favorable as such things can be expected to be yes and I'm really excited to close that book and move forward with my happy life with Sylvia. And Sylvia's really excited to post an incredible video where she blows the roof off. And you have the day, the day that Andy's so like, Sylvia, the divorce is finalized. <laughs> Ooh, there's going to be a TikTok video and you have no idea the amount of dirt <laughs> I can share on this cow is going to be so, I'm going to nut so everywhere. Thanks. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, just <laughs> all over. So thanks, Chris, for your discretion. <laughs> it's appreciated. And um, yeah, yeah, that's the general update. And it's the, you know, more wide ranging update. The power of Sylvia making a request to the air for something that was, in her eyes, morally worthy to summon such an incredible response yeah. has really inspired us 
uh, to be in part more charitable with the reach and power of Sylvia's platforms. Yeah. Uh, and feel free to look forward to more charity drives, involvement yeah. in charity events totally. like the Creator Clash or our own events that are inspired by that same sort of yeah. desire. We feel very strongly that that's an incredibly rewarding way to use the influence that Sylvia has cultivated with yeah. some funny videos and, on the internet. And yeah, like you said, like we you we we were able to get help from this amazing community for you. And I'm like, oh my God, what else can I get yeah, help? Like for just, other people. That's just me. Because yeah. that was just you. Yeah. Like if- We could solve some real problems. Dude, and like, I'm trying to look into what and how we can do. Like 2023, I'm trying to f figure out by the end, like how we can make a charity drive or do charity events because I definitely want to get more involved in that. That's awesome that people- like that's the other side of of social media that I think is so beautiful is that it can really bring people together and make people resonate and get people connected and like that's what we need more of that's it what was we need more of. it was a really good day humbling it's experience good. too yeah. like in less than twenty three hours we raised twenty six thousand dollars which was. I didn't think that would happen. I thought we would get a couple thousand, which would still be amazing and would still be super helpful, but that it just started trickling in and every 20 minutes when I would check the status, it was like a thousand more and yep. another thousand. And I'm like, wow, how? And the result was just, it's, it's night and day. Yeah. It's just allowed, yeah. it's allowed me to take a breath and interface with this as the obnoxious legal proceeding that it is and not feel like i've got a boot on my neck pressing down yeah. the entire time. not having to like like you were looking into selling stuff that you had to like get rid get, of getting rid of precious things yeah. like and it's not i'm God. not the only one who's been forced into that position right. so it's 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 also humbling yeah to have been able to receive this generosity and yeah. this support knowing that so many people go without that and just have to solve that problem yeah themselves. which is why i want to give back Sylvia's community rescued me from that possibility with this amazing yeah. outpouring of generosity. So I'm, I'll be yeah. grateful forever, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I I do remember the posting, and I do remember being a part of that, and I do remember like like it was oh, it was wow. like just just over a day, just over twenty four hours, and yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely stunning. With that being said, and like it honestly is a testament to who you are because the community that you have behind you is due to who you are and how you share and what you share. And also, again, touching back to communication and being genuine, you guys lay it all out there into the world. And if you're being fun and having a good time and scaring the absolute daylights out of Andy, or if you guys are just being genuine with each other, sharing a moment, Sylvia, you're going on the very creative offensive when it comes to trolls and rude comments and doing call outs where, I mean, they are way overdue for some people. Again, it is just a tribute to who you are, the community that you have around you. So like, thank you. congratulations. And thank you. here's like, I honestly hope at some point in time, my one wish to you is for you guys to share the stage with Dan Avatan. I, I, I genuinely no think that is a possibility, honestly. Oh, man, we'll see. That'd That's be a cool wild. star to look at. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Everybody needs a mountain to walk for, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with that being said, um, share yourself. And like, where can people find you? Where do you want them to find you on social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on YouTube, if you are interested in us playing video games and having a jolly old time, please go ahead and find us at Power Up Couple. On TikTok, my name is Skull. It is spelled a little strange. It is S Z period K U L. You won't miss it. That's it. Oh, I got my tw I got my Twitter. If you all want to see some funny posts and Twitter. some spicy posts, yeah, Twitter's rated R. F Twitter is rated R. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me there as Skull as well. S Z K U L. In general, TikTok is yeah rated TikTok. PG. Yep. Rated R. Yeah. That's who we are. And 
If you search for S Z K U L, you'll find <laughs> everything. My art, our content, our adult content. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> this is also your website. My art website. Yeah. yeah. If you if anybody's interested actually in my illustrations as well, uh skulldigitals.com. Yeah. Perfect. I really do appreciate the time you guys have devoted to talking with me. Uh I like I am massive fans of both of you. Uh yeah. and like I I honestly like when I when I get an opportunity to talk to people like yourselves, like I'm I am always blown away at the time that you give someone like me. So I really do appreciate everything that you've shared with me and everyone today. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, man. Jay. Been ours. Really, this is a super fun experience. Yeah, you clearly sure. radiate professionalism and oh, yeah. passion in this. This has been nothing but pleasant. Yeah, thanks again for reaching out and for just asking if I wanted to talk. That says, that's it. how easy it is, folks. <laughs> just be like, yo, you want to chat? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Being genuine and conversation. Who'd have thought? 